from blazingwanderers.com and what I have right now is the electrical cabinet. You can see the three lithium iron phosphate batteries and they're there in the bottom. And then what's up next here is this is the backer board that I'm going to mount all of the electronics to. You see it's a fairly complex geometry to fit inside the electrical cabinet and also uh, for the wheel well. And then we're going to try our hand at laminating. So this is the back side of a black laminate. Um, saw several builds where the electrical cabinet had laminated boards look really nice. So we're going to try our hand at lamination using and Wilson Art contact adhesive. You just roll that on both sides, let it dry, and then very carefully place the laminate down onto the wood. All right, so the board is laminated. Uh, this is a black matte Wilson Art uh, laminate sheet. Um, I used a router to go along the edge uh, to clean up the edge. You want to cut the laminate a couple inches larger than uh, than your board and i showed this to my wife and she was like why such a complicated board well it's a really good question it would have been a lot simpler just to put a rectangular board on the back side um, of the the electrical cabinet however then then that would shift out everything by a half an inch plus the width of the laminate and i also lose you know that dimension underneath the garage space um, so you know not huge but you know i decided to to go ahead and, and do this I, I just eyeballed it these cuts are not 100 percent exact and again it's inside electrical cabinet it's probably overkill as it is i'm going to go ahead and fit this into the electrical cabinet and then be ready to start mounting my components tomorrow and i roughly outlined an erasable marker the outlines uh, for each of the components. In this case, this is the battery to battery chargers. And where you see these circles here is I'm going to create a pill shape. And then, so and this is going to be a 1.25 diameter hole saw. And then I will connect this to make a pill shape. Same on this bus bar, but in this case, I'm going to use a three quarter inch bit to be able to do that. In that case, it's a Forstner bit. Um, you can see in pencil here where I've got places to drill for screw holes. And basically I just wanted to have everything laid out on the board. And then also room, uh, for example, for you know heavy gauge cable, you need more of a bending radius. It's really useful before you start to go cut holes to get everything marked out. And then since I'm using a laminate on the front here, purely for aesthetics, I don't want to chip the laminate since I've spent the time to, to laminate uh, this to the surface of the board. I don't want to chip it, so I'm taping this off, and you can see here's where I've got, I'm going to cut a, uh, a radius here, and then I'll connect it to make, to cut this out to allow the cables to come down behind the board. All right, so further along, in terms of preparing my electrical cabinet and you can see I've got a series of pill shaped and other complicated geometries that are cut into this along with some holes and the reason why I'm doing this is so that most of my wiring will actually be back behind the electrical cabinet uh, behind this panel will be hidden and I put this board in front of my 8020 so that I have an inch and a half gap on the back side. So I can run wiring on the front, I can run wiring on the back, as well, of course, mounting everything on the front. Um, with the laminate, you have to be careful not to chip it. Um, I have tried a couple different bits. A standard drill bit's probably the worst. A hole saw worked pretty well for me. Um, both forward and reverse. So a burn through the top layer and reverse before going forward but i've also tried it just going forward 
Um, you can see an area here that I've taped off. Um, I actually drilled these holes are three quarter inch holes. Now what I found actually works out really fast and really well is just use this step bit that you probably have if you're doing a van build anyway. Uh, this is a three quarter inch step bit and it just goes through the laminate and the board like butter. Um, so I've cut these series of holes. This is for my fuse panel. And so I'll have the negative come up here, the main, and the positive main here, and all of my branch circuits will come out here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a router now. I'm going to clamp a board to one side here and one side here. And then I'll use a router to connect this. And I'm actually going to come across over here. Originally, I created this shape, and then I realized with the Servo GX, that's going to be about right there, that I actually needed to extend this out. So I'm just going to extend this all the way out over here and then up this way. These wires can come down through on either side, and I'll connect this. And to do that, I'm using a Dewalt router. And I've raised this so this will run along the board that I clamp. And then this is the cutting part of the router bit. And um, I've used that to cut out these shapes. You can see where I've used the hole saw here and here, but then connected using the router. And a couple examples here and here. All right, after a lot of work, the board is finally ready for mounting. Uh, it took a lot of planning and laying out everything to see how everything would fit, including how the wires run from the front and the back, as well as how they relate to the van. So you'll see what this all looks like once I get it mounted, but i um, excited to, to have this part done at this point. And this mess of wires you see in front of you, this is the project for today. So electrical cabinet, everything is mounted. And as you can probably tell by all the blue, I uh, decided to go with Victron. I'm really happy how, how it's all turned out at this point. I've started some of the wiring, so you can see with the Victron Multi Plus, uh, this is the AC in, the AC out. This will be the battery in. I also have some communication with the Servo GX coming from here. Um, there's a Servo GX, and I will be in the process of today of basically doing all of the, the wiring that will be inside of here. Um, and then once that's complete, then transfer this to the van and the wiring that then needs to terminate inside the box that's incorporated into the van, that, that'll be the second part. But the first part is to get as much of this wiring done as possible before I got it into the van. So that will be next. But basically, if you're gonna be doing these, these big cables, um, highly do recommend that you get a hydraulic crimper um, so that you can make really high quality connections. Um, this is one that I just made. And um, you know, if you do this right, you know, these things are, are very secure. Uh, if you don't do it right, then you've got a really big problem on your hands. So make sure you know what you're doing whenever you're terminating especially these really high current carrying uh, wires uh, don't want to create a fire situation and i am super excited today we are just about done with the electrical cabinet and i'll take you through a little bit of what this all is a little bit of a disclaimer you see these are three 206 amp hour uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries from Sock, um, very popular battery at this point. I will point out though that uh, these carry a tremendous amount of energy each. And so this is only set up to be a 12 volt system, but there's a lot of power here. And so if you're thinking about doing this yourself, um, make sure that you get some training, you do some reading, and that you're super careful, you know, even connecting these cables. Um, you know, there, my, I've got a 600 uh, amp fuse that's here, but if these cables were to fly out and touch anything, then you could potentially get serious situation on your hands. So 
full disclaimer, um, if you're watching this and you're gonna do this on your own, be really careful. So I'll start off with uh, you know the batteries. So we sized these so that we could have roughly an all night AC experience. So if it's hot and we don't wanna be miserable in the van, we wanna run the AC and we're not on shore power, I wanna be able to, to basically run the AC overnight. And then once you have that kind of figured out in terms of how much power that you really want or that you really need in your van, you size your batteries, then you can size the rest of your system. Um, so first I'll, I'll start with the uh, Multi Plus here. You can see everything's Victron, the nice blue. The reason why we want Victron is it just works. Great reviews, uh, everything communicates with everything and you know, you're, you're pretty well guaranteed that you're gonna get something that works well. You're gonna pay for it though. Not a lot of discounts out there, so um, recommend Victron, but you know you're gonna pay for it. So this uh, Multi Plus uh, system, uh, this is a charger inverter. So you can see here, um, this is set so that you can take uh, shore power and charge your batteries. It's also set so that you can take power from the batteries and then power all your AC circuits. Uh, so if you look down here, I don't have um, the van wiring connected. Obviously this is sitting on the bench right now. Next up will be to connect this. Um, but we'll have shore power coming in to a breaker here. Uh, coming up to the multi plus and then coming um, back out, um, you know, to all of our AC circuits. Um, then this is branched so that each one of these is 15 amps. Uh, this is sized for, for 50 amps um, and we'll run all of our AC from here. Um, then also we'll have, you can see the, the DC 12 volt coming in to power the multi plus. Uh, and this is sized so that uh, this will charge um, these batteries in a reasonable amount of time. Next thing I want to point out are these three Orion smart non-oscillated DC-DC chargers. And these are so that we can charge from the alternator and charge the batteries. So this will take, you know, anywhere from, you can see the input here is 8 to 17 volts and the output is 10 to 15 volts. So your fluctuations in your alternator, especially small alternators, this will take this into account. And each one of these units will put out about 30 amps to charge the batteries. Why three? Well, 30 amp is the largest uh, Orion smart charger, DC-DC charger. They make some buck boost chargers, but uh, those are really expensive. So three of these is uh, less than one of the buck boost chargers from them. And the reason why three is if you look at okay 90 amps you've got 600 amp hours roughly here if these are at a state of 80 percent discharge we drive the van all day we're set up to to charge the van battery or the uh the batteries here from the alternator of the van and again be able then to run the ac overnight uh, if we're moving from place to place uh, the last way of being able to charge the batteries is from the solar panel that we'll have on top. Uh, this is a smart solar charge controller from Victron. Uh, it's a multi power point tracker. So it basically, depending upon the irradiance of the sun, um, the position of the sun in the sky relative to the solar panel, this will make sure that you're getting the maximum amount of power, current times voltage going into your batteries. And this is set up to handle up to, to 30 amps. Um, uh, and 100 volts. My solar panel is in that, I think, 60, 70 volt range, and we'll put out about 300 um, watts. Now, 300 watts into to this is, you know, going to be 20, 30 amps max, and you only get that four or five hours, you know, if you average the solar out over the day. So, you know, that's really sized to power the refrigerator. So we could keep the refrigerator going pretty much indefinitely in reasonably sunny areas. Um, but it's not going to power the AC. So you have to be really realistic in terms of what you expect to get out of your solar system. And you can see the breaker that I have here for the PV in and the PV out. 
This little blue box here, the Servo GX, um, this will, this does a bunch of things. So um, it, it pulls in, you know, data from the MultiPlus, it pulls in data from the Multi PowerPoint Tracker, it pulls in data from this shunt that will tell how charged the batteries are. And then it also has the ability to pull in tank levels. So for the level for our our freshwater tank and our gray water tank will have that coming in. It can have temperatures. It's set to, to you know, be able to communicate via Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Uh, so there's some uh, LPG uh, type sensors and temperature sensors that you can connect via Bluetooth. And, uh, and then you can then access all that information from your phone or from a panel. Uh, the last thing, well, no, I guess not the last thing here, but a couple other things to cover. Uh, this is the uh, basically the a couple of different fuse systems here. So again, part of part of doing this safely is making sure that all of your wires are protected. So if you happen to have a short in the system, um, you know, you want to, to make sure that you have fusing that will blow before the wires get overheated and catch on fire. That's really what you're trying to protect against here. Uh, so I've got you know, wires coming in with fuses. It's being fed then from the battery. This is a, a disconnect, and then you know this quick blow 600 amp fuse into the into the batteries. Um, and again, on these connections, you can see I've I've got uh, these protective covers. But getting the torque specs and everything correct on attaching this is really important, so that these don't come off, start you know moving around and and touching things, and and basically potentially starting a fire in your van. You don't want that to happen. Um, then, so basically this then powers uh, this, uh, you know, fuse panel. So now we're basically branching out the circuits further and further. You can see I've got some things connected. Once I attach this to the van, there'll be a lot more connected, such as a refrigerator, uh, lighting, um, USB plugs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, moving over, I'm going to come on the back side. Um, I kind of got anal retentive. I wanted it to look nice, so I laminated the plywood on the front. I accidentally laminated the backside first, so this was a mistake on my part, but it makes it look nice on the backside. They'll, nobody will ever see this. Um, you can see the, the wiring routed on the back, and that's largely the reason why I mounted the board in front so that I had a space or cavity in the 8020 to route wiring on the backside, you know, so I didn't have to expand you know there's a there's a lot of stuff going on here and the more that i can route wiring both front and back then that helps to make this as small as possible and as tidy as possible uh, you'll see the front side here i don't have this laminated right now this is just temporary i uh, was playing around with a few things but we'll have um, ac connection on the back the usb connection on the back uh, we'll have a, a, a light for underneath in the garage that will be here that we can turn on and off from here and of course then being able to turn the system off, this helps to keep your battery from draining. It's also a safety feature. Um, if there's anything going on in the van, I can access, not have to get into this panel and be able to turn this off. So this is basically ready to go into the van at this point. Uh, one last thing is uh, for attaching the batteries and making sure they're not moving around. Um, I've got this battery strap that comes across Really good for the first and the third battery. The second one's gonna will a little bit, but I'm not too concerned about that. Um, I did design this so that this was really tight. So there's not gonna be a lot of shifting and moving back and forth, you know, potentially stressing these connections over time. All right, so this is how we're doing it for our van. Uh, hope this helps. And again, if I haven't been clear enough, um, if you don't feel comfortable doing this, uh, please get an expert. This is a, you know, something that you, you really wanna take very seriously from a safety standpoint. So the electrical panel is now installed in the van. For the physical connections, we're using the plus nuts that we had installed into the wall previously. And connecting here, two connections here, and then one here. Provides for very stable connection to the wall. 
I am going to add a connection down here. There's a little bit of movement along the floor. So I'm gonna add some connection points here uh, before we put all the cabinet facings on. In terms of the electrical connections, so I've got the AC coming in here. I'm gonna have a fuse box on the other side for all the circuits on the passenger side of the van. And that plus uh, the PV fusing is here. You can see the fuses at you know, 60, 150, 400, 400. And then I have the, the large 600 amp fuse there. The solar module, PV module is coming in here for the maximum power point tracker. I have the fresh and the gray water level sensors coming into the Servo GX. As we go down here, the shore power and AC circuits are connected and uh, attached now. And so we'll have three AC circuits uh, throughout the van. The alternator connection for the battery to battery chargers come in here you know, for the three Orion battery to battery chargers. And so that's pretty much it. I am going to be redoing some of the uh, these cables. Um, I'll post a video on this to show where I made a mistake here in terms of getting all three batteries to properly charge. And it's really dealing with the, the cable links and making sure that each of these will charge appropriately. In terms of the rest of the electrical work that needs to be done, it'll be here with the fuse panel that we'll install and um, you know we'll we'll show that once uh, once that's put together but we are definitely making progress on the electrical